So about two years ago, I took a hiatus from shooting real estate photography, and I subsequently sold my Fujifilm X-T2, since that's really all I was using it for anyway. For personal work, I would rather be using my X100T or my X-T1. So for the better part of two years, that's what I've been doing. But lately I've decided to dip my toes back into real estate photography, and I've been shooting some houses here and there. And since I no longer have my X-T2, I've just been using what's available to me, which is my X-T1 with the 16 mm 2.8. So I just wanted to make a video showing the images, some of my favorite images I've been getting from the last few real estate shoots using a nearly decade old camera in the X-T1. So for my real estate photos, I like for them to look natural. I like to use the ambient light and in achieving the look I want, I shoot an ambient frame and then to rein in the highlights, I take a flash exposure. I then blend the two in Photoshop. I take the flash exposure, put it on top of the ambient. I reduce the opacity of the flash exposure to anywhere from 30 to 40%. And then once that's done, I brush away about 95% of the flash exposure, really only leaving the windows or any blown highlights with a little bit of flash brushed in. The end result is I get an image that looks very natural. It doesn't look artificial, like I'm using artificial light, like a flash shot would. It looks like an ambient photo, which is some of the highlights reined in. And I find that technique works for me. I get a much more pleasing and natural look than shooting HDR and the workflow I really enjoy. I've shot about half a dozen houses or so using the X-T1. And what would you expect? <laughs> it does great. Of course, the sensor is enough resolution, the dynamic range is, is still more than I need, and I'm able to achieve the results I, I want with the X-T1 just fine. Sharpness paired with Fuji's glass is always great. I use the, uh, the, the Godox TT350F, which are just cheap little flashes, as well as the uh, transmitter that sits on the, you know, in the hot shoe. And shooting with the X-T1 in lieu of not having an X-T2 has been great. I would say the biggest downside in using the X-T1 for real estate photography is probably the uh, tilting screen. Now the X-T2's LCD screen tilted vertically as well as horizontally, but the vertical compositions that I would use like to shoot bathrooms, I'm shooting fairly low on the tripod about stomach or chest height. And when I shoot a vertical composition, it is very handy to use that vertical tilting screen to see my composition instead of having to literally bend down or get on my knees to see the back of the camera. Uh, the X-T1 doesn't have that, it only tilts horizontally. And that is annoying. And you only have one card slot, which once again, it's not a huge deal. I just like having that extra backup if I'm doing a paid shoot. But other than those two things, uh, I, I can get the job done with the X-T1. Feel like it's just proof that this camera is just, it keeps on giving. <laughs> I just love it so much. I think if I were to start getting more and more real estate photography work again, and I was doing, you know, a couple houses a week, that sort of thing, maybe even three or four houses a week, a lot of volume, I would probably go and rebuy the X-T2 just for those different features that make uh, life on site easier and having that backup of, an ex of a second card slot. But for just doing a house here or there, maybe, you know, several a month, something like that, the X-T1 is, is gonna be what I use. So, still using the X-T1 in 2023 as well as my X-100T for lots of personal work in 2023 and beyond. So anyway, wanted to share these photos with you. Um, tell me what you think. I know prices on Fujifilm cameras lately have gone crazy. I guess I haven't really been paying attention, but a lot of supply issues, which makes me all the more grateful for uh, what I have. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.